Our goal with Company of Heroes 3 is to deliver a campaign experience that is more player-driven and more replayable than ever before. We want our missions to adapt to how you play, and we want them to feel different based on the choices you've made throughout your campaign. There is a lot of variety in what you're doing in each mission and what you're being tasked to do. So in some missions, you may simply need to force enemies out of an entrenched location in a defensive position. In others, you may be recovering valuable wrecked vehicles. You may be trying to raid and destroy enemy resources, destroy their munitions caches or fuel reserves. When a player starts a mission, we don't necessarily know uh, what faction they're going to be, what company they've chosen, how much they've upgraded that company, and what units they've unlocked within it. So when we build the missions, we can't make any assumptions like that. We have to build our engagements and build our missions in a way that it challenges um, the player, no matter what they bring, and that it can be completable by the player, no matter what they bring. The goal of companies was to give the player a vehicle for investment and that let them approach RTS content in different ways, depending on who they entered the mission with. So a special operations company will play a lot different than an airborne company. And then within the scope of what an airborne company is, depending on how the player chose to invest in that company and what skills and abilities they had unlocked, they could approach the problems of gameplay very differently. One of the major objectives we had with Code 3 AI is to make it more organic and emergent than previously done in Code 2. We set about creating a bunch of tools that give AI guidance to complete objectives and less scripted tools to uh, directly instruct the AI to do certain objectives. We'll say a zone is labeled a defend zone or a hold zone, and the AI understands to bring units into those zones and then complete the objective. When it comes to the authenticity in the mission, you know, uh, the player could come into a battle traditionally fought by the Americans as the British or into one fought by the British as the Americans. And so it's in some ways there is going to be a bit of an ahistorical nature uh, to the way that the player plays this. They can play it completely accurately or they can kind of write their own history a little bit. Each company will have something to offer in support to other companies who are actually going into a mission, whether it be the airborne are nearby so you get access to airstrikes, or there's an armored company nearby and you can deploy some of their tanks to assist in a mission, or they're providing a passive benefit economically in some way. So we've got missions that are focused around a single squad of engineers who has to recover and recrew a damaged tank and escape from behind enemy lines. We've got uh, small missions focused around uh, trying to assassinate a high-level officer and escape unscathed. So we want to tell these small stories, these small kind of human stories, in between these larger historical stories of massive battles taking place in iconic battlefields. Thank <music> you. Gamesplay.org